1,200 Gazans. And when Arafat told me that he didn't even want to go to a Camp David II summit with Prime Minister Barack and the President, President Clinton, because he wasn't prepared to make the compromises. When he went, he wasn't. He then blew up the peace process with the Intifada. And all the work we had done on the ground for the Palestinian economy was gone. So I, I have long experience with this. It's difficult enough to deal with the Palestinians when they've rejected peace plan after peace plan by Barack, by Olmert. But when you separate the peace plan and put it off from the economic plan, it certainly has no opportunity of success. One of the things we were able to do in the Carter administration at Camp David and with the Egypt peace plan is that both sides trusted the United States. Here we have a situation, unfortunately, in which the administration has cut off aid to the Palestinians. It's accepted the annexation of the Golan Heights. It's moved the embassy to Jerusalem, which, by the way, I support, but didn't do so with any quid pro quo, like a settlement freeze or announcing a two-state solution with an eventual embassy in East Jerusalem. So the trust factor is gone. But I have to say, even with that, the Palestinians would be better off having at least the economic peace, but they simply won't accept it. May I give you one other data point? I just came back from the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, and there the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Gargash, while I was there, said that we, the UAE, made a mistake in not dealing with Israel 70 years ago, and that the Palestinians have lost one opportunity after the other, and that they would only have a rum state now, and the real question was the status of the Palestinians within Israel. So I think that history is passing the Palestinians by because when they've had an opportunity for a peace plan under Clinton, with Barack, with Olmert, they've rejected it. Now they don't want even the economic okay. peace. So they're very difficult partners to deal with. Ambassador Stuart Eisenstadt, stick around. There's a lot more we want to discuss with you after the break. You know, the Palestinians are sending this message that peace is not for sale, but like right. the ambassador is uh, saying, they're sending yet the old message that they're not going to negotiate or compromise. All right, still ahead here on Crossroads, Iran says it has quadrupled its production of low enriched uranium after President Trump warns about the end of Iran amid escalating tensions. Also ahead, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu accused of bribing ministers in an attempt to get support for a law that would shield the prime minister from prosecution. That's next, right here on Crossroads.